Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. Remember, if the body can get sick, you can also get well. It's about lifestyle. It's about the choices that we make every single day. The choices we make really become the kind of life we're going to have. Powerful, and it's true. And it's about making the better choices. You don't have to be perfect all the time. A lot of people think that with health, it just comes, you have to be perfect. You have to eat organic, wheat grass five times a day, twigs and berries. It's not true. You can have fun. You can still eat healthy. Enjoy it. Matter of fact, many health foods actually taste so much more, be- so much better, even than a lot of the processed foods. It's pretty incredible how well healthy eating is and how well it makes you feel. Really, really good. Now, digestion is where everything begins. If you hear me talk much here on the show, you'll hear me always talk about the digestive tract and how it really impacts our overall health. If you don't have a healthy gut, you're not going to have a healthy body. So healthy habits that are known to be helpful in preventing a lot of the gas. People complain of gas and bloating and all. You may not have so much of an issue, just a generalized issue with gas and bloating. There's always a reason that that happens. So let's talk about some ways to reduce gas and bloating, get the gut healthy in the way that it needs to be. So again, everybody says fiber, 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 and we do. We need about 35 to 40 plus grams of fiber a day to really keep everything moving and be at a good level of health. So when you're upping your fiber intake, you don't want to rush it. You want to go slow. So if there's a major change in your diet, your digestive system will need some time to get used to the increase in fiber. The digestive tract can't break down fiber and excessive gas is often a result. So gradually increasing is the way to go. So increasing your high fiber foods in your diet uh, is a great way, but gradually increasing the high fiber foods It allows the bacteria in the digestive tract to adjust in the extra fiber and prevent gas. So again, it takes, you do it over two or three months. You don't want to just all of a sudden hit it with a bunch of fiber. You will start getting gassy for sure. Now again, chewing fast, this is tough to do. In the society we live in, it's always rush, rush, rush. But to ease a lot of the excess of gas, you want to cut down how much air you swallow when you eat. And I'm talking to myself right now because I eat fast. I do everything fast for the most part. So you keep quiet. You know, you don't want to talk too much while you eat. Uh, Vananda Chef, he's a she's a, a registered dietitian in the L.A. area, and a spokesperson for the American Academy of, or yeah, American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics says to eat slowly, chew your food thoroughly, and relax while you eat. Set aside enough time to enjoy your meal rather than rushing through it. And the other one is sip and don't suck. Sucking on hard candies and chewing gum really can worsen the condition and the gas and bloating can actually get worse. So what you want to do is, is modify those behaviors a little bit, not do it so much. And of course, you know, again, drinking this way can always let you uh, swallow less air. And again, author of belly fat for dummies, uh, Aaron Polinsky is a spokesperson as well. And she says, switch to sipping from a glass and cut down the air you swallow. That will help in the gas and the bloating. Now, the fake sweeteners are the big one, too, that people say to be concerned with. So the sugar alcohol that's produced, mannitol, is a big one. It's commonly found in a lot of the sugar-free mints and gum. Well, it contributes to a lot of the excess of gas as well. Foods are very problematic because they're fermented by bacteria in the colon, and the fermentation can cause gas. So constant brown rigs who's a spokeswoman for the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, says that you'll also be aware that taking cold medications contain a lot of the sugar alcohols that can lead to a lot of gas and bloating as well. Now, many people chill out. They kind of lay back when they dine. You really want to be careful after that. Don't eat so much and then lie down, which is pretty common. That can increase gas production. Take a walk, get up, move around a little bit, and that can help. Again, leading to my next point, which is walk off your meal. Regular physical activity Going for an evening walk or tackling a light project in the in the evenings or after a meal is actually better for you than lying down and just kind of uh, being laid out because what that does actually increases the gas and the bloating. Sodas, of course, are another one. The fizzy, the sparkling water, the seltzer water, carbonated water, 
definitely increases flatulence, blows up the excess gas, and you load that up with high fructose corn syrup and a lot of the flavorings and all that. And it's just not <laughs> the best recipe for for overall health. When it comes to beverages, of course, the temperature matters. They say drinking cold beverages with a meal can slow down your body's proper digestive actions, so making digestion more challenging. So they say in addition, the cold temperature of drinks may cause intestinal cramping, which can lead to digestive discomfort and gas. So skip the ice and sip more at room temperature instead. Now, that's a big key because drinking is so combined with our normal activities and our meals that it makes a big difference. So again, a couple of things to look at, you know, keep your body, you want to cut down flatulence and gas and discomfort, keep digestion working as good as possible. 888-283-7272, that's 888-283-7272. We're going to the phones and talk with Reba. Hi, Reba. I am suffering with chronic Lyme disease. I've had it for 12 years and I am trying to keep myself as well as possible nutritionally, um, eating a very high protein diet. Um, and I just want to know what else I can do to help my body. There's a lot you can do. I mean, with limes, the challenges that come along with it, the fatigue and the achiness, which comes at various times and very level, varying levels are something to consider and something to look at. So I would encourage you on a couple of, re, on a couple of notes to, to do a couple of things. One is, number one is to get your, make sure everything's balanced and you're eating. So you want to make sure you're doing lean quality protein sources like chicken, fish, beef, or eggs, low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, and then your good healthy fats, your almonds, your walnuts, your cashews, your avocados, those types of foods are going to serve you well, keeping your body balanced. And then, again, I know you're probably getting treated at some level, so one area that's of great importance is making sure you get plenty of fluids, uh, plenty of water. I like chicken broth, beef broth, uh, vegetable broth, organic, of course, give you plenty of electrolytes and can really help stabilize and support. And then you've also got the aches and the pains. Now, it's always good to have a blood test done too and or, or some form of testing done by your physician and see if your serotonin levels are low. Low serotonin levels can create a lot of excess issues brain chemistry wise and also body chemistry wise. So I would encourage you to look at that along the way. That can make such a big difference with what you're looking at. So I would encourage you to go that direction and then let's, you know, again, if you want to call email, our, our you know team members will help you. We can talk about it on the show, whatever you need to, but I'll tell you this. Lyme disease is a challenge, but there are a lot of natural, great ways to support it. Don't forget, teasel is an incredible herb that's been looked at and used for years to help suppress the symptoms of Lyme and Rocky Mountain spotted fever and those types of issues. We'll be right back. If you're looking for increased strength, increased endurance, and better recovery, then look no further than an all-natural nutritional supplement called creatine hydrochloride. Concrete is the brand, and it's the most absorbable form of creatine hydrochloride found today. Now, creatine is not just for athletes. You've probably heard that before, but concrete, creatine hydrochloride, is for the everyday person looking to improve their health. Listen, I started taking creatine in college when I was a strength conditioning coach at Florida State University, and I've taken it ever since my college years, and it's made a massive difference in my life. Everything in my body, I believe, is functioning better because of creatine. Creatine hydrochloride, I've moved over to using concrete, and it is the best form of creatine on the market. Concrete creatine hydrochloride is available at most Walmart stores and on walmart.com or any store that carries nutritional supplements. Just make sure to look for concrete brand creatine hydrochloride and watch your endurance, your strength, and your recovery, and your immune system get boosted today. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShakeNetwork.com.
Lines are open, 888-283-7272. Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web, on call, radio. And whatever you're struggling with, the lives of the body can get sick. Also get well about the choices we make every single day. Now, food choices become a challenge for quite many, many people. And I'll tell you that a lot of it is influenced by our emotions and a lot of emotional eating going on. By the way, if you're not getting our weekly email newsletter, go to the website. You can sign up for it there. It's free, costs you nothing, and it can really empower you and encourage you in a great way. Absolutely great information that we send out each week. But sleep is a big issue for our food choices we're finding now. So poor sleep, they see, leads to poor food choices. Researchers looked at 23 healthy young adults and found that they were more likely to favor unhealthy snacks and junk foods like pizza and donuts when they were sleep-deprived. Brain scans revealed that sleep deprivation was linked with impaired activity in brains in the brain's frontal lobe. And so what we've discovered is that high-level brain regions required for complex judgments and decisions become blunted by a lack of sleep, while more primal brain structures that control motivation and desire are amplified. So the study lead author, Matthew Walker, who's a professor of, professor of psychology and neuroscience at the University of California, Berkeley, said that he said in high calorie foods also become significantly more desirable when participants were sleep deprived. So the combination of altered brain activity and decision making may help explain why people who sleep less also tend to be overweight or obese. Pretty amazing. Sal, you're going next with us on the phones. How can I help? I have pseudodiabetes type two. Okay. So you have type two diabetes. I guess you're wondering what to do. Um, one of the big kids, I'll just tell you this, you know, obviously you want to always follow what your doctor's telling you to do if you're taking metformin, glucophage, whatever. But I'll tell you one of the big keys is going to be your eating habits. And here's the key to remember, multiple meals throughout the day. And when you eat a meal, make sure you have a fat or a protein with any carbohydrate. So if you have vegetables, eat some almonds. If you have an apple, eat some you know nuts or a couple of hard-boiled eggs because that way you're getting proteins, you're getting fats, you're getting everything that your body needs to balance out blood sugar levels. Don't ever eat, say, a baked potato by itself or just eat a banana by itself because it'll spike your blood sugar. You're going to start throwing it into that yo-yo effect that you're trying to avoid, and that creates better stability for these areas. So I would encourage you to look at those first because you, you have to get – your eating habits in a good system to balance out blood sugar levels. Now, chromium picolinate, alpha lipoic acid, vanadyl sulfate, a lot of the different uh, vitamins, minerals, trace minerals, and cofactors can be helpful at supporting really good issues as far as balancing out. But, you know, at the end of the day, you really want to watch and be careful because the, the challenge becomes when when you're dealing with something like this, and with diabetes especially, if you're not getting good exercise, if you're not eating the right kind of meals at the right time, drinking plenty of water, managing stress levels, it's it just turns into a big cascade of events later on where if you jump on it now and make really good decisions and start, you know, again, making better lifestyle choices, eating better, the whole nine yards, you can really stop it dead in its tracks, slow it down, and even have it go the other direction. Diabetes is one of those health challenges that can go the other direction very quickly if you give the body a little bit of everything that it needs. And it's just about making good choices every single day. But they're, they're learning more and more now. I mean, we're even seeing it on a regular basis, how well diabetes can be managed and how easily you can get everything where you need to go if, and it doesn't matter where you've been, matters the choices you make right now, if you start making better new choices. All right, hope that helps. 888 You're listening to On Call Radio. Check us out on the web. Also, if you haven't joined our weekly email newsletter, you can find that there at the website. And our app is out where you can listen to the show 24-7. Really cool from your iPhone, iPad, and stay connected with all that we have going on here at the show. Now, Mediterranean diet has always been a hot topic, and they're saying now it links it to better heart health. Which, again, we've known that for quite some time, but more studies are being done to verify that. And they're saying now that it really can make a big difference with overall heart health. So following the Mediterranean diet may help reverse condition known as metabolic syndrome. 
And a study compared a low-fat diet to a Mediterranean diet, which is a diet rich in whole grains, vegetables, fruits, legumes, nuts, fish, and olive oil. The Mediterranean diet was supplemented with either extra nuts or extra virgin olive oil, and it didn't lower the odds of developing metabolic syndrome, but it's a collection of risk factors for heart disease compared to a following low-fat diet and study found the Mediterranean diet did increase the chance of reversing metabolic syndrome, which is really great. A lead researcher, Dr. Salvado, who's a professor of nutrition at the University in Spain, said it seems that the Mediterranean diet supplemented with nuts or virgin olive oil has similar effects on metabolic syndrome reversal. Those on the Mediterranean diet, he said, with extra virgin olive oil, 30% more likely on those in a low-fat diet to reverse their conditions. So the good news is that's why keeping your healthy fats up are so important to about 30, 35% of your overall diet. You're going to help support the overall nervous system uh, and really support it in a way that protects it. It builds it. It protects it. You're going to protect cardiovascular flow in the systems of cardiovascular function because that is such a big deal. Overall heart health and managing that makes a big difference. And we're not eating the right kind of foods. It can cause tremendous uh, detrimental damage to the body. So that's why in this study, it was really important because they said the Mediterranean diet has been shown to be helpful with cardiovascular disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, and overall metabolic syndrome. The HDL, the good cholesterol, elevates. And the LDL, the bad cholesterol, decreases. Those who ate this diet on a regular basis also stabilized their blood sugar levels which was a big deal of course so again it's about giving the body what it needs it's about being in balance staying in balance and giving the body the right tools to win coming up we'll jump in grab more questions about your health and got some new tips you don't want to miss Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. To find out more, visit the show online, inshapenetwork.com. Lines are open, 888 Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web on whatever you're struggling with. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. It's about lifestyle and the choices we make every single day. Can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. It's about choices that we make every single day. And the choices we make today can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. It really can make a difference. If you can step up, or not worried about what you used to do, but today make brand new choices and literally begin to thrive instead of barely make it. Our food of the hour, we love to talk about. And remember, food either brings health to the body or can take health out of the body. So much of what we do every single day matters, and we have to make better choices. So one of the big keys, I always like to highlight foods because of what they do for the body. Our foods are powerful. And it's not always about supplements. It's really about getting good whole food nutrition in with what we need and doing it on a regular basis. So what I want to focus on are tangerines and one of my favorite fruits. Most citrus fruits, tangerine, are rich in vitamin C. They're a great source for your immune system. Of course, they fight free radicals and they're highly reactive. And the vitamin C antioxidant power comes from its ability to scavenge free radicals and disarm their propensity for damage. A lot of digestive benefits too. The pectin is a complex oligosaccharide that acts as an adhesive between the cell walls of the tangerines and other types of fruit. A study published recently in the American Society of Microbiology showed that when digested, pectin is fermented within your intestines and can increase the number of beneficial microflora 
found in the gut. It's got a lot of cholesterol lowering benefits too. This is what's really great about the tangerines. The fibrous white tissue that's found between the segments of tangerines called the lamella and this membrane, which is rich in soluble fiber, one of the most beneficial effects of a diet high in soluble fiber is the reduction of the cholesterol found in your blood. So the soluble fiber lowers cholesterol by forming a thick gel-like substance in your intestines. And when it's being digested, the substance slows the absorption of cholesterol and reduces the low-density lipoproteins in the blood. So the dietary recommendation of soluble fiber is about 10 to 25 milligrams per day. That's pretty typical. I really like to see, and a lot of the alternative uh, practitioners really like to see more in a 35, 40 gram. You know, if you can get up in that range, so much better for the colon, so much better for the gut, and really makes a big difference. Weight management's another as well. So eating a well-balanced diet that's mostly fruits and vegetables is a smart way to manage your weight. A high-fiber diet content, tangerines can help you feel fuller for a longer period of time. So feeling full really can impact your weight because when you feel satiated, you're less likely to overindulge in a lot of the poor food choices. So again, when you're when you're you know your body's feeling better, you feel better can make a big difference in the way of your choices, right? Because it affects brain chemistry and our brain chemistry is a big one. So tangerines involve a lot of great nutrients and a lot of great benefits that can support you uh, pretty much all the way around and give you the things that your body needs to thrive, not just barely make it. 888 Lines are open. You can give us a call or go to the website. Go to the phones and talk to Ruby. Hi, Ruby. I have uh, urinary incontinence when I stand up after being seated. Well, Ruby, that involves quite a few things. I mean, one, one key you want to make sure, and you're not doing any caffeine, so don't do tea or coffee, anything that would involve a lot of caffeine, because if you do, the, that challenge is if you do a lot of tea or coffee in, in that sort of situation, it can, it can affect the incontinence and also it, or it can affect the, the, uh, the bladder, rather. And can affect it in a negative way. Now, one key you can look at is supporting the body. There's certain minerals that can help that. And again, technically in medicine, we say there's no cure. There's no major treatment that can be done. But there, there's a lot of thoughts on the alternative side. Just so you know, manganese is a really good mineral to look at. But again, your vitamin D levels need to be at a certain place where the manganese can help. Also, you've got to look at supporting the body and the bacterial gut flora that has to be managed at some level too. So again, getting some blood testing done, looking for nutritional deficiencies, having your physician put that together and then, or a nutritionist, someone that can evaluate and look at that, I think would be very helpful to you. And again, staying off the caffeine, that's one of the big risk factors that have been really uh, mentioned at for sure. It's been one of the big challenges. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Lines are open. You give us a call or go to the website. Roger, you're next with us, my friend. How can I help? I want to discuss neuropathy in my feet. All right. So let me tell you. Let's just talk about neuropathy for a minute. What it is. All right. So when when you get neuropathy in the feet, uh, that's usually the nerves that go down into the feet start in the lower back. So everybody thinks. It's just the nerves directly in the feet that's been, that are being affected, and it's really not. What actually is being affected, uh, the nerves coming out of the lower back, going down through the legs, into the feet, the toes, all that, that is the bigger challenge. So that just to encourage you with that, it's, it's one of the big tips to really follow a good eating pattern. And I'll get some blood testing done again, find out what your B6 deficiencies are, or if there's a B6 deficiency, because vitamin B6, pyridoxine, is the number one deficiency that causes a lot of the neuropathy. Now that's from a chemical standpoint. You've also got a structural standpoint that has to be evaluated. So the discs themselves have to be looked at. A chiropractic physician is a great way to go to get looked at. Of course, they look at the 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 disc space in between the two bones can see if it's degenerated DJD. And if that's, you know, they're, they're by impacting the nerves that come out of that area. And if it's, if it's causing that to be affected in any way, 
So you always want to have that looked at just to have a peek to make sure nothing's being affected uh, in a negative way. That would be a real big piece. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Give us a call or go to the website. Now there's been another worker that has been diagnosed. And officials have said recently that uh, one of the Duncan's nurses uh, had been looked at and, and tested positive, which is a little bit of a challenge. Two days following uh, Mr. Duncan's death, they returned to the hospital with fever, and the test revealed that she had con- uh, contracted farm had, or fam had, uh, Ebola, and her patient, uh, which at the public health officials began a frantic investigation to determine who else at the Texas Health Presbyterian might have been exposed. Officials also are still monitoring about 48 people who have been exposed to Ebola through a contact with Duncan prior to the hospitalization. But Frieden expressed optimism. They said that the first pool of potential exposure will emerge without a single infection. They've now passed through the highest risk period and increasingly unlikely they'll develop Ebola. Pham is in a stable condition and said herself that she's doing well in a statement released recently. And thanks to everyone, she said, for the kind wishes and prayers Fam has received a blood transfusion from Ebola survival. Dr. Kent Brantley, who's a medical missionary who was infected while serving as an aid worker in Liberia. His plasma, which is the clear part of the blood, centrifuged to separate it from red blood cells, is plentiful with antibodies accumulated during Brantley's own fight. And, and Stefan uh, Juretsko, who's the director of infectious disease diagnostics at the North Shore, in Great Neck, New York, says the amount of antibodies from Brantley serve as weapons to the virus as far superior to the yet-to-be-informed antibodies of the Texas nurse herself as she fights the disease. So the Ebola epidemic in West Africa continued to spiral out of control with the World Health Organization warning that it could be up to 10,000 new cases a week within two months. So the World Health Organization said it's Ebola statistics reported about 4,500 people have died out of 9,000 reported cases, and nearly all cases and deaths have occurred in Sierra Leone, Guinea, and Liberia. And again, overworked health workers on the ground in West Africa struggling to avoid the infection. And Doctors Without Borders said 16 of its employees have been infected and nine have died. It's very sad. Very sad. So our thoughts and prayers definitely go out to the families as they're struggling with this. I mean, it's 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 definitely something to be concerned about, even with the protective gear and everything. But again, avoiding it, keeping your immune system strong. I think you know, obviously, keeping flights out and and staying off of uh, going in and out of the country probably one of the safest ways to go. Meanwhile, U.S. Customs, they say, and police, uh, public health officials are preparing for a stepped up entry. So. They're going to be doing it Washington, Dulles, O'Hare in Chicago, Hartsville here in Atlanta, and the Newark Liberty International in New Jersey. They are going to be doing more screenings. So people that have fevers or people that are coming in and out of those countries are going to be doing special screenings for those passengers to make sure safety measures are covered for all those that are flying and make sure that everybody's as safe as possible during their travels. So again, Ebola is something to be concerned about. We'll keep you abreast of what's going on right here on the show. Coming up, more questions about your health. Also, we've got some new tips about heart health for women. What do you do? And it's one of the rising healthcare concerns that we're having. And we'll talk about ways to support good heart health when we come back. Are you ready to chow? It's time for Keto Chow. When it comes to eating healthy, the keto diet has become one of the nutrition leaders in optimizing health, losing unwanted weight, and reaching your health and wellness goals. No extravagant cooking, no long kitchen cleanup, and most importantly, especially for me, 
It's convenient. Just put quality keto chow powder in a bottle, add some heavy whipping cream or your favorite fat, a little water, and boom, shake it up and you're ready to chow. Keto chow tastes amazing. So make keto chow easy for you and your family today with keto chow. Let's go chow. Visit keto chow online at ketochow.xyz. That's ketochow.xyz. Lines are open, 888 Welcome back to the show. Check us out on the web. Whatever you're struggling with, know that we're here to help. We're going to take you from where you are in your current state of health to where you need to be. It's all about lifestyle. It's about the choices we make every single day and how they can impact your health and your life. So five vital heart health tips for women. Heart disease has been on the rise in females, and there's some great tips that you can follow to be able to help you, to encourage you, to support you to really keep you in check and can make a big difference in your overall health and your overall life. So first you want to understand your own risk factors. That means knowing what normal blood pressure, normal cholesterol, and normal glucose are and finding out what yours are. When you go to your doctor, ask if he or she has checked these levels. If not, when were they last checked? Depending on your risk level, you may need to have blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood glucose checked every year or every few years. Know your goals, too, for your key heart health indicators. So know what's appropriate goals that you have and what your goal, blood pressure, cholesterol, and glucose levels are. These numbers can be different depending on your level of risk. For example, if you have a strong family history of premature heart disease or if you have diabetes, you may have different goals than other women. So there are other resources that can help you understand your goals. These include a lot of the websites created by the American Heart Association and the American College of Cardiology. So an ageless woman's guide to heart health says that in addition to questions, you should also ask your doctor and questions your doctor should ask you. So do your homework and also, again, it's a big deal. Make sure you're on top of things. Ultimately, you have to be on top of your own prevention. So many people want their health to be taken care of by someone else. But you really, at the end of the day, it comes down to taking responsibility for your health and your life. I mean, no one is going to take responsibility for you but you, right? So you can you can make those decisions yourself and do better, or you can get into a tough spot where you're relying on everybody else. But, you know, it comes down to your own choices. I mean, your eating habits, your exercise habits, your your stress and your stress management – all that plays an ultimate role in your health. So you got to know the signs and symptoms. Here are some of the basics. So heart attacks kill over about 250,000 women each year. That's a lot. And many suddenly and unexpectedly die. Women do not often recover as well as men. So here are some things you got to look at. Look, weakness, shortness of breath. That's a big one. So chest pain. If the majority of women have a heart attack, do experience chest pain. And it may not be the crushing, explosive pain that men report, but it definitely is there. Unusual fatigue. So if you're fatigued, can't snap out of it, just don't feel better, can't get out of that situation, then that could be a situation or a condition as well. Shortness of breath. Many women report gasping as if they just run a long distance or having difficulty talking during a heart attack. Some cases, the shortness of breath can occur days or even weeks prior to a cardiac event. Nausea or dizziness is another one. So women frequently feel nauseous, vomit, or feel like they might faint or something during a heart attack. So the symptoms may also feel like heartburn or an upset stomach. Profuse sweating is another big one. So a heart attack may cause a woman to be suddenly drenched in sweat for no reason. Oftentimes women feel both hot and cold during a heart attack. So it could be a little bit of both. So you got to be careful. And then a lot of the non-chest pain too you got instead of crushing pain in the chest, many women develop less severe pain in the upper back, shoulders, neck, jaw, or arm. Anxiety is another big one, too. And again, you got to be able to know the difference between anxiety and a real heart issue, but it's tough to know. So you don't want to make that judgment call. You definitely want to go to the physician and have them take a look 
and let them do the basic test and rule it in or rule it out. That has to be looked at in a great way. So it's women intuition. Many, many women experience a feeling of independent doom of fear before or during a heart attack. So again, that's got to be looked at as well. Now, the other one too is, is to make sure you're really empowered yourself. So information should not really be a cause for alarm, but a lot of rates of heart disease for women are too high. And the important empowering message is that we can change. You really can, but you have to have a good system around you and understanding what the risk factors are. That's a big one, but also having a good team around you. If you're, if you're concerned with a husband, a spouse, children, uh, family members, that are aware. So teaching others what these signs and symptoms are. I mean, everybody should understand the basics of a heart attack. Just like everybody should really understand the basics of CPR in case you ever need to use it. But all of that makes a big difference. And one of the big challenges that you have to look at, I I really think in any kind of heart condition is being able to make that decisive decision either yourself or with your, with someone that has these kind of um, symptoms and get them to a doctor immediately, get them to the ER, because that's one of the, give them the greatest tools to be able to make it through more than just about anything else. So it's making that quick call to either call an ambulance or get them where they need to be. That'd be a big, big key in that. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. We've got Rance in Virginia wants to know what to do about low energy levels in the morning. Okay, so you have low energy in the morning, but you feel better in the afternoon. That's pretty typical of most people. That's really why most people eat, or I'm sorry, drink coffee, is to get the cobwebs out, get your brain working in the morning, really get the body functioning at a at a high level so you can be prepared for work for the day, right? And it throws us into that spiral, and it's quite a challenge all the way around. So I would encourage you, to look into adrenal health. We've got a lot of that on our website. Vitamin B5, vitamin C, very, very helpful. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer and engineer, John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. Did you know you could listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the Asa RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.